personal finance masterclass. Um, I can see that uh, people are joining and uh, we have quorum. I think we should just start. It is two minutes past the clock. Um, this would be a good place to begin our session today. But it's good morning again. Uh, it is a bright morning. It is a beautiful morning, a little cold, but all said and done, it's still a beautiful morning. Um, just to get started, my name is Sam Githu. I work with ICLI on Asset Management, and I am your host today. I'll be taking you through this uh, second session, and um, which is titled, Where, How, When, and Why. For those who are joining us for the first time, Karibu Sana. For those who are here for the second time, uh, welcome back. Uh, of course, um, you will uh, remember that in our first session, we talked about the introduction to the basics of financial, personal finance. And that was a very engaging session. Um, we have seen you receive the budgeting tool. And I want to believe that quite a number of you have uh, had a chance to look at it, play around it, and actually get to understand where they are with the, in, in terms of uh, their personal finance. Going on, I would like to introduce our company for those who are joining us for the very first time, ICLI on Asset Management is a subsidiary of ICLI on Holdings. Uh, ICLI on Asset Management is incorporated in 1985. That's making us one of the oldest fund managers in the country. Currently we have um, around 233 billion assets under management as of July, 2021, and still growing. Um, our kind of business is um, centered around segregated pension schemes, collective investment schemes. We are a REIT manager. We also are private wealth fund manager. Uh, we also do private uh, or property investment management. And uh, we also do offshore asset management, uh, balance sheet uh, asset management, umbrella pension scheme management, and then invest investment advisory services. That's pretty much what we do as a business. And um, I would want to move on to the next part where I want to introduce our speakers for the day. Our financial experts for the day, I will start with Mr. John Degua, a portfolio manager with ICLI on Asset Management who has over 11 years in the industry. We also have Modoni Muo, another portfolio manager, also with 11 years in the industry. Um, at this point, I would like to um, talk a little bit about, before I invite the first speaker, about certain things that we are going to do in this particular session as we carry on. We will have a moment where we will have a poll. And once the poll window comes up, kindly click on it. Just spend a few seconds as you respond to the poll. At the tail end um, of the event, we will have that some question and answer moment. But in the meantime, as the presentations are going on, feel free to post your question some of the questions will be responded to on the chat. Others will be responded to at the tail end. I want to believe that we will have sufficient time to respond to all the questions. And now I will want to invite the first speaker, Mudoni Muo. Mudoni, welcome. Take it away. Thank you very much, Sam. Good morning, um, investors. Um, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, we are online, so you could be in a different country. But in Kenya, we are still in the morning. Good morning to all of you. Um, I hope you're doing well and you're keeping safe and taking all the precautions that you can take against COVID. Um, today, I will discuss or talk to you about why we invest. And I'd like to start my presentations with words of wisdom. And the words of wisdom from today will be from Ralph Sega. And he says, an investor without um, investment objectives is like a traveler without a destination. So if you don't know why you're doing something, it's like you're on a, you know, in, a, in a car driving around with no destination and you'd waste time, you waste money, you waste resources, and it can be quite frustrating. Um, so today we'll just discuss a bit about why, and then my colleague John will come in and talk about where um, and how you can do the investment. Um, so just to get your perspective um, as the audience, to be nice to know why do you invest. So we'll have a poll that will come in that will have uh, multiple questions, 
But for me, I'd like to just know um, why, why do you as an individual invest? And you can put your responses and thoughts um, on the chat. Um, so yeah, I think the poll has come in, you know, why do you invest? Have you ever invested? Just uh, quickly chat um, on that and just be nice to know what your thoughts are before I give my thoughts um, on why, why we should be investing. So I'll just give two minutes for that, um, maybe less, um, but yeah, looking forward to your responses on why you think, or on why you invest. Is you do it because it's fun, because your friends are doing it, to earn an income, you know, it would be good to know why you invest. So I think um, as, you, as you continue to put on the chat, put your views and thoughts on the chat and also respond to the poll, I think I can continue um, and just give reasons why we invest. So the first thing and the most important reason, um, I know rather the largest reason why most of us invest is to earn a return. Um, and this return can be in form of income um, or capital gains. So income can come in front of rent, if you have a property or a house somewhere, dividends, if you have shares in the Nairobi Securities Exchange, or interest from a bank deposit, or coupon from a bond. So, you know, you want that regular income, whether it comes every month, every quarter, every six months, every year. Um, a lot of us invest so that you can get that income um, from the investments that we've made. Um, another reason we invest is for capital gains, and capital gains simply means the change in value of the asset. So it's if I bought an asset at one shilling, and now it is valued at two shillings, the difference between two and one is the capital gains. So two key reasons, or rather two forms in which we can earn a return from income and capital gain. And again, usually number one, this is the largest reason why people invest. Um, another reason why people invest is to secure their retirement. Um, many of us are in formal jobs, and when we reach 60, we will be kicked out of our jobs and told, adios, you know, go enjoy the rest of your life. I um, mean, so for some of us, we want to invest that when we are in retirement, we are able to enjoy the current lifestyle um, that we have, that we can still be able to pay for our food, um, our medical insurance, you know, go on holiday and, and do such things. So we, we plan towards that or we invest so that we can secure our retirement and can be comfortable in retirement. Another reason we invest is to raise funds for a project. Um, so it could be raising funds to build a house or saving to go on holiday um, or to pay school fees and especially university school fees, which tend to be um, much uh, more expensive than primary and secondary. Or I could be saving to start um, or investing so that I can start a business. Um, again, it would be nice to know, um, you know, why, why, what else would you be raising funds for? You know, um, you could go ahead and feel free to put that on the chat, um, but I will continue with my presentation. A key reason why we invest is to gain independence. Again, so some of us are employed. Um, thankfully, we have a good employer, so I'm no hurry to you know, depart. Um, but some do not have good employers and you want to gain your independence from your employer. I um, mean, also whether they're good or not, you want to be able to know that if whatever reason I, I separate from my current employer, I want to be able to sustain my lifestyle. I want to be able to, to move on with my life. And so people put or make investments so that they can gain independence from the employers. Um, and also some young people, you want to gain in independence from your parents, so you save and invest so that you can move out of your house. So independence is good, it gives you control of the decisions that you make and investments or investing is a way um, or an avenue for, for people to be able to do that. Um, another key reason why people invest, and this one is actually um, quite close to my heart, is to have an impact on society. So we have people who invest their money so that they can be able to educate other people. They invest their money so they can be able to cover medical bills. They invest their money so they can be able to, to fund research. You, know, you want to invest your money so the income that comes from your, your, research, uh, your investment goes towards research to look for a cure for cancer um, or even a cure for COVID. Um, research towards, um, you know, um, could be nuclear science or anything that you have a passion um, for. So people do make investments so that they income or the return from these investments can go towards funding things that they are passionate about or even sports i mean you can invest to fund a football club um so these investments can be done directly that is you know as an individual or through endowment funds so we have big universities um you know like uh, harvard have uh, one of the largest endowment funds 
So they take money from donors as well as the school itself. They put it aside and the income from the investments they make is what funds scholarships in Harvard. And we, we do have such structures um, in Kenya as well. I know Starehe um, Center has, I mean, such things. Then we have foundations. Um, equity Bank has a well-known foundation, Safaricom Foundation. Um, you know, we've, we've heard of equity wings to fly. So Equity Bank has put funds aside. They are invested so that the proceeds from those investments can fund bright but needy um, children, you know, Palm House as well. So such foundations, they, they are there for them, their passion is educating people and that's why they invest the funds. And we also have trusts, um, which, which can be, like I said earlier, I mean, for cancer research, for supporting cancer people with, uh, in terms of the, the procedures they go through or any other thing. And then uniquely, we do have private equity funds or venture funds. So these are just, again, uh, people who collect money and they invest their money to have a social impact. So they'll, they'll put their money in companies or projects that have a social impact in society. So that's, um, I mean, a, a key reason to, to invest. And I think I like it because then you're investing beyond yourself. You're not just investing for selfish reasons, you're investing to help other people and to improve our society, which is quite key. Um, another key reason and, um, to invest or why people invest is to reduce their tax obligation. Um, I mean, we all, we all pay taxes one way or another. Um, and I have a, 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 an, an illustration here. So we'll just assume that you uh, will take someone who earns a gross salary of 100,000 and we'll take a straightforward tax of 30%. This is not the reality. This is just to demonstrate the impact um, that investment can do in terms of reducing your tax obligation. So tax at 30%, the net income is 70,000. Um, if this person makes investments towards retirement, and this has to be through a registered retirement um, platform. So this is, could be through your employer or through our insurance companies that have you know, personal retirement savings or individual pension funds. Um, so as long as it's registered with the Retirement Benefit Authority, not just you putting savings aside, but if it's registered, so the same case, you have gross income of 100,000, then they will deduct um, the contribution you make. So if you make a contribution of 20,000, what is actually taxable is 80,000 and not the 100,000. And so your tax reduces from 30,000 to 24,000. And what you take home increases from 70,000 to 76,000. So just demonstrates that because you're making an investment, and this is a win-win, you're making an investment towards your retirement, and you're also reducing your tax obligation and increasing the income that comes to your pocket. Um, so it's a win-win, and it's a, a major reason why people um, invest, is, uh, make why people invest, you know, to reduce your tax obligation. Um, another reason people invest or why people invest, I know is to leave a legacy. And so William James says, the great use of life is to spend it for something that will outlast you. So you want to you want to invest that you can leave your children or your school that you are in. You know, if you're an alumni or an alumnus, um, you want to leave a legacy for them. So invest for their sake. Um, and Vita Belfort, and I hope I pronounced his name correctly. He says, "Legacy is not what I do for myself; it is what I do for the next generation." So, um, I mean, it's an important reason why people invest to leave a legacy. So that whether it's my children, um, I'm leaving something for my children and my children's children, or for other people, you know, going beyond yourself, investing to leave a legacy. Um, or we also invest, so people invest to protect one's estate or for estate planning. So I know that governments, um, and Kenya has been really pushing um, when it comes to like property, they've been pushing people to make their property productive. So, so that people, you're not buying thousands of acres of 100, 100 acres, and then you leave them idle, waiting for the price to go up and sell. So when they, they want to, to move people beyond um, just speculation that if you don't invest in your, in, your, in your property, if you don't make it a productive property, you could lose your estate. The government could reclaim it. Um, I know that some governments have done that, and the government of Kenya was pushing towards that. I'm not sure if it's, if it's, if it's actually law yet. Um, but I mean, so if, if you had been, if you had inherited some land and you're told if you don't, make that land productive or if you don't invest in that land you could lose it it is it is great incentive you know it is a reason why you would invest because if you don't invest in it you lose it it's also good for estate planning so estate is just all the assets that a person has whether it's property money 
um, and you invest so that you can just properly plan your estate so that when you're not there, um, whoever uh, uh, take, whoever has it um, can be able to move on with their life um, and, and that you have planned for them properly. Um, this was discussed quite um, intensively and extensively in the, in the first session, but it is a key reason why people invest. And it is to accumulate um, for an emergency or to, to create an emergency fund. I mean, and, and I think COVID did prove the importance of an emergency. You can imagine if you are working in a hotel, um, finding you in senior management, but you're told to close your hotel. But if you had you know, funds set aside, say six months, um, it, it does protect you. At least it covers you for that um, six months um, before you are able to either get another job or adjust yourself. Um, so accumulating for an emergency fund is a very important reason why we should invest. Um, and then now for those who uh, follow economics, um, a, a reason to invest is to beat inflation or to retain or enhance your purchasing power. So inflation is just gener the, the general upward trend in the prices of goods in the society. Um, price of, of, of unga was 98 shillings a few years ago. It is now 120. Um, so that there has been inflation, the movement of the price of a packet of unga from 98 to 120. So if for, for me to be able to be to continuously buy that packet of unga, I make investments so that they can cover um, um, the inflation or the, as in prices increase, even my income is increasing to be able to enable me to continue purchasing the things that I have been purchasing in the past. So that's what it simply means. Um, why do we invest to beat inflation or to enhance our purchasing power, our ability to continue to buy things? Um, another investment um, or another thing that um, makes us decide why we should invest is to diversify. Um, so example, I have a well-paying job um, you're earning good money. Let's take the CEO of Safaricom. I mean, you're earning in the millions, um, but you want to diversify your sources of income. So you invest. So you buy shares, you buy bonds, you buy property, you invest in a money market fund, an equity fund. So just to diversify your, your income stream so that should you lose your job or should the stocks not perform so well, um, you have property. If your property, um, your tenant goes away, you have a bond. Um, so it's just to diversify your assets, to reduce the risk that if anything happens to any of the investments you've made or any of your sources of income, whether it's your job or your properties you have, you do have other assets or other investments to protect your, your income. And the last reason that I have is because it's fun. Um, so for some of us, investment is fun. It's, it's nice looking at the stock market and, and bonds and properties and seeing um, what, what assets are there. We may not invest in them, um, but it's good to know what is happening out there. I mean, it's a good question to ask is, is it a good reason to invest? I would say it should be your least reason, um, you know, because it's fun, um, but the others, um, the others are quite key. But I mean, it doesn't hurt to invest when it, uh, because it is fun. Um, so in economics or in the investment world, in the investment industry, we like to summarize the investment objectives into four key things. So capital preservation, capital growth, capital accumulation and income generation. This is just, we like to feel important, technical, we like to use jargon, but it simply means capital preservation, you know, preserving the capital. So it's just making sure we protect the amount that we have put in. So if, I had, if I've been given 100,000, my objective could be, this is not my 100,000, it's 100,000 that I want to give someone else, or it's 100,000 that I need to pay school fees in three months. So I do not want this 100,000 to go below 100,000. So that's capital preservation, you know, making sure whatever I put in, the initial investment I put in is maintained at a minimum. Um, the other investment um, objective is capital growth. So for here, my aim is to increase that 100,000 or grow it to 300,000 in the next five years. So I am aggressive. I, I, I know that 100,000 can, can drop to 80,000 because I'm investing in assets that are high risk, high return, you know, such as shares. I know the, 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 the prices can go down, but I am well aware as well that the prices can go up. Um, and so my objective is I want to grow these funds. Um, preservation of the capital is not key in this case, it is growth. So you want to aggressively increase the value of your capital, capital growth. Capital accumulation is I want to slowly um, accumulate funds of money towards a certain target. Um, for instance, I want to buy a house. The house is 5 million. I know in the next 10 years, I can invest um, half a million each year. So I'm accumulating, my objective is invest 
500,000, 500,000 every year. So that in the next five years, I'll have my 5 million and build my house. Or alternatively, I want to go on holiday, which is more fun. Um, it will cost me 50,000. So I know 10,000 over the next five months, I can accumulate that, hit my target and, um, and do what I wanted to do with my target. So capital accumulation and income generation. So this is another objective. Um, so this is simply, I want to put my 100,000 or my 10 million or whatever amount of money you will have uh, to set it aside and then it generates an income for me. So this is usually a key area, especially for people in retirement, um, because you, you people plan for that, you want something that will replace the salary that you are earning. So for income um, generation. So, so again, to summarize, um, the four key objectives, capital preservation, capital growth, capital accumulation, and income generation. Um, so I will, I'm closer towards the end of my presentation and I, I, I'd like to talk to say why it's important to know why. So it looks like there are many whys there, um, but it is important to know why, why it's important to know why you are investing so that you do not waste your time, you do not waste your money, you don't get frustrated and waste resources. So what, when you know your why, when you know why you are investing, why you're putting money aside, it enhances commitment. So if, if I say my, my objective is to plan, you know, to have a comfortable retirement, so I am, I'm investing for my retirement. Um, because I'm aware of that, when I, I, will, I will be committed towards putting those funds aside every year towards um, my retirement goal, so that I can have a lovely retirement. It also increases your focus and encourages critical thinking. So when you're discussing and thinking, why am I investing? I mean, it makes you really think through um, why, why um, think through why you need to invest, in which assets you need to invest in. And also then, I'm going to the first point, it raises the chances that you'll make the right investment decision for your circumstances. So investing in money market funds is good, um, but maybe it's, it may not be the asset class that you need for your circumstance to achieve your goal. But if you haven't discovered what your goal is, you will invest in what your mother tells you, what your friends in, or in an, ad an advertisement you see in social media or on TV. And that investment may not um, meet the goal or meet your needs um, you know, as an individual. And ultimately that's what you want to do. You want to be able to achieve the goals that you've done. So thinking through why I am investing um, does help you and it increases the chances that you will actually make the right um, investment. And lastly, it allows you to evaluate the progress that you've made and to know when to take an action regarding an investment. Um, so, um, you know, a lot of you are our clients and you know we have Digitrust, our Digitrust Trust platform and we have something called goal investing. So you'll set up your goal in the platform. Um, say my goal is to, to, to raise 100,000 and then you'll know uh, 100,000 within one year. So, you know, I need at least, you know, 10,000 and I'll be able to meet my goal of, of 100,000 within the next 10 months. So it helps you um, achieve your goals. And also you'll know if my goal is 100,000, how much have I saved so far, 50,000. But be, so because you know why you're investing or wh what your goal is, it's 100,000, you're able to evaluate the progress that you're making towards your goal. And it also encourages you to continue investing. You know, if you've been investing for five years and you have a big pot of funds, you're seeing the growth, it, 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 it just encourages you to continue um, investing. So the line here, a point to note, and it's very important, especially for people who are close, when you invest with your close friends or you invest with your brother or your spouse, um, different people have different reasons for investing and it's based on their own circumstances. So it is important to know your own, especially when you're investing with your friends, um, in your chama or investing with your siblings, um, your chama people um, have this, this, the investment objective you'll have as your chama or as your family, but you also need to know yours as an individual so that you make sure you're meeting your individual needs um, as you continue with your, with your life. Um, so knowing when to invest is important. Um, it's good to know your thoughts, it'd be nice. If you can put it in the chat, that would be really um, great and we will read through that in a bit. Um, but I, um, Zig Ziglar is a famous um, guy and he says the best time to do something significant such as investing is between yesterday and tomorrow. So yesterday is already gone. I know the, the police say the best time to have invested in Safaricom, you know, just as an example was 
when it was listed or when it was at two shillings and 60 cents. I mean, that was a long time ago. If you didn't invest, you didn't invest. That was yesterday. Um, and tomorrow is not a promise. You don't know well, uh, whether you'll be there um, or whether the investments that you're looking for will be available. So the best time to invest is today. Um, so just you know, think through and know the best time to invest is today because today is where you are and today is what you have. So just some tips, and this is my last slide, some tips of knowing when to invest. Um, and this is very important. And um, Warren Buffett um, keeps emphasizing this. And this is, you invest when you have understood what you're investing in. You, so you invest when you understand your why you're investing and then what you're investing in. So it doesn't matter what it is, as long as you understand you know, the risks that are associated with the investment, the legal implications, the tax obligations, the investment horizon of that um, investment opportunity, um, you know, the expected income, and if, they, if it has any liquidity. So as long as you understand that investment opportunity, or rather once you have understood that, then it is time to invest, or you can invest in it. Um, the other time, or the best time is when you actually have the funds to invest in it. I mean, if there's an opportunity to invest in a property that requires 10 million, if I don't have the 10 million, it is not the time for me to invest in that property. However, it would, be at, it, it would be time to then see how can I accumulate the funds towards that other asset. So you can invest to invest. I can invest in a money market fund, accumulating the funds so that I can invest in my property um, five, six, 10 years from now. Um, you can also consider good debt and emphasis on the good debt. Um, you know, there are people who work for banks or other institutions where um, the debt is really subsidized. So you have, you know, you can take a, a five-year loan at 4%, 3%. I mean, take advantage of such debt because the investment you're making in maybe earns you 10%. So it, it, in that case, um, if you don't have the funds, you can take the debt from your employer um, at 5% and make your invest and invest in something that gives you 10%. So a tip on when to invest is when you have the money, when you have understood your why and when you understand the asset. And then um, with, there's a lot of talk of buy low, sell high, so a good time to invest is when prices are low and it's also good to sell when they are high. Um, but Jim, Ross, Jim Rogers gives some wisdom in addition to buy low, sell high. And he says, buy low, sell high. I mean, that's pretty simple and straightforward, but the problem is knowing what's low and what's high. And it's important to know, um, again, what, what is low and what is your time horizon so that it can reflect what low is. A good I go back to my Safaricom example. Um, Safaricom was low when it was trading at two, two shillings and uh, yeah, two shillings and sixty cents. Um, but it was also low when it traded at twenty shillings. It was also low when it was trading at thirty-five. Low when it was trading at forty. And even now, even though you have to buy Safaricom now, say at forty-five shillings, if your time horizon is ten years from now, then it can be considered low. So it's to to be able to understand the low is to know, is there an upside? Is there return that you can still get from this asset? If your answer is yes, then it can be relatively low. If your answer is no, then it is high. It is, it is not the time to buy that asset. And then, um, and, and this is for people, especially who are risk takers um, and, and invest in the equities or shares market and even equity funds, um, is you can buy high and sell higher. Um, but that is a story that um, my colleague John will talk about um, even more. Um, but yeah, when to invest, when you've understood your why, when you've understood the asset, when you have funds to invest, when it is low. Um, and, and the last one is when you have attained your investment goal, it is okay to sell. And selling is, 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 is still an investment. It's part of investing because it allows you to realize your goal. So for instance, if I said I'm going to invest in the, in the money market fund for five years so that I can accumulate five million to buy my property. Um, though when the five years come, it is okay to sell your money market you know, investment. If I'm investing in an equity fund or equities or shares, it is okay to sell. It is part of investing. So it's good to know when um, to sell. Look at um, if you have achieved your investment goal, it is good to exit um, the position. So thank you. Um, dear investors, for listening to me, um, over you to you, Sam, um, and we can go through the poll shortly. All right, thank you, thank you very much, Modoni, for that very informative session on the when and why. And I think um, I think it's 
starting to get very interesting. Um, just a recap on the certain things that we need to do. The, um, the poll tab is still open. We are still receiving your responses. I can see that we have um, quite um, pretty much everyone has responded. I've also noticed that um, over almost 200 people have joined be uh, in between. Not to worry, um, you're not too late. Please um, uh, get into the poll tab, um, answer those um, very simple questions, and then we will uh, proceed on. Do not worry, I've also noticed that there are quite a lot of um, people asking for um, the last uh, sessions recording, the session one, um, the budgeting tool, we will definitely be sending you if you have not received it yet, but we will be sending you this after today's session. We will also send you this session's uh, recording, so don't worry about that if you had joined uh, a little later when we, we, we got started. Um, the question and answer tab is still open. Uh, please channel your questions there. The chat is still open. If you feel that you'd like to chat and uh, maybe comment about something, please do so. This will be a good time to welcome our second uh, presenter. And as I welcome our second presenter, um, let's start talking about this. I mean, get to your, talk to your friends, talk to get to your social media, start um, tweeting, start talking about this. Hashtag uh, financial literacy KE. Uh, it has already been written there. If you need to look at it again on the chat, let us start talking about this uh, going forward. So, our second uh, presenter here is John Degwa. John, um, take it away. <clears throat> thank you, Sam. Uh, thank you, Mudoni, for that uh, very inform informative session. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on uh, where you are uh, in the world. So Mudoni has taken you through why you need to invest. Uh, very very key uh, element when investing. I'm now sharing my screen uh, for the presentation. Right, um, so where to invest? Uh, when you come uh, uh, in this part of the world, um, these are the various uh, investment options uh, that we have. Um, so you have equities, uh, stock, stocks, uh, shares. You have what we call fixed income securities. You have cash and cash equivalents. You have property and you have alternatives. So I'll start with equities. Um, <clears throat> we have what we call the Nairobi Securities Exchange in Kenya. We only have one exchange. Uh, on the exchange, we have listed companies, companies that have gone uh, public and have listed uh, on, the, uh, on the exchange. I, I think uh, last time I checked, we have over 60 uh, listed, uh, uh, listed companies, uh, various sectors as well, from telco, banking, uh, you have consumers, you, uh, I mean, we have an airline, uh, we have cement manufacturers, uh, we have a tobacco company. So quite a wide array in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of sector exposure. The second uh, market for equities is what we call private uh, private equity or, or, or private markets. Uh, there, there does exist a market uh, where people can buy companies privately, although not as robust or as liquid as a public market, but you know uh, a market in itself. Um, I mean, private equity in this part of the world has been quite vibrant. Uh, I think when I look at inflows uh, into the private equity space uh, in this region, Kenya beats you know, uh, uh, our neighbors in terms of uh, ticket sizes and, and, you know, just the amounts that uh, 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 that we receive. So yes, we do have a private market where you can privately uh, own a certain percentage of, of a company that is, uh, that is not listed. The next one is fixed income securities. Uh, fixed income securities just means that uh, uh, it is fixed in terms of um, your, your, your principal amount and then you continue, you earn an income on a regular basis. So the first one there is government bonds and bills. Uh, uh, the, the, the central bank uh, every month uh, during its primary auction uh, issues uh, either one or two, I mean, they decide, but mostly we see at most uh, uh, three bonds. And uh, they are open to the public. Um, they're open to all Kenyans, uh, open to institutions. 
as institutional investors, we you know we are we are quite uh, uh, we are quite heavy uh, uh, government bonds. Bills is the same. The difference between a bond and a bill is the tenure. <clears throat> a bill is one year and below. So you have a 91 day, uh, that is a three month bill. You have a 180, 184. So that's a six month bill, and you have a 364, that is a, a one year, uh, a one year bill. Typically, they tend to be discounted securities. Uh, what that means is that uh, for every 100, you actually pay the central bank 96 or 95, and they pay you. Uh, you earn the difference between 195 or 92 is what you uh, is what you call your uh, your yield. The third one is corporate bonds. Uh, they are uh, private companies that issue bonds um, that are looking for funding. Um, you know that are looking to invest uh, or grow their balance sheet or you know uh, just expand. So they issue corporate bonds. We've had quite a few of them issued by banks. Uh, we've had the brewers, the likes of EABL, Safaricom at one point had a, you know, had a, had, had a corporate bond. The only difference between corporate bonds and government bonds is that um, the corporate bond market is not as vibrant, but it is exist. Uh, but the government bond uh, market is obviously way bigger. Uh, I think it goes into the, into the trillions. But the corporate bond market currently uh, is, uh, I think, off the top of my head, around 20, 30, 40 billion or, 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 or thereabout in terms of uh, existing, uh, existing bonds. The third one is a cash and, 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 and cash equivalent. Uh, yes, you can invest uh, your cash. Typically, this is short term investing uh, where you put your money uh, in a bank deposit. There are two types of bank deposits there's what we call a call deposit and what we call a fixed deposit. Now, a call deposit has no specific time frame. You're just telling the bank, uh, I'm not sure when my obligation will be due. Please hold this cash for me, but I don't want it to be lying idle. Let me earn a certain level of interest. Uh, with a fixed, you're very specific. You tell the bank, you know what? I want to fix. I will use this money to pay my son's school fees next year, January. That is uh, six months away. Kindly lock my funds for the next uh, uh, six months. Another difference is that uh, the fixed deposits tend to have a slightly higher rate than, 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 uh, than the call deposits. Then comes the money market fund. Uh, and in so many ways, the money market fund is a hybrid of the bank deposits and the call deposit. Uh, in the sense that one, there's no time frame, uh, uh, unlike the fixed deposit and also like the call, call deposit, but a money market uh, tends to earn you higher than a call and even a bank deposit. So a money market fund is a pool. So it's what they call collective investment scheme. So it's, 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 it's a pool of funds. It's people's money, mine, Modonis and Sam's, and you put it together uh, through a professionally managed fund. Um, and then and, and, and with a, you know, a portfolio manager and that portfolio manager goes to the market and looks for uh, money market instruments or instruments whose tenure ideally is at say one year and below or even two years and, 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 and below. In a sense, a money market fund is a way to pack your cash in quotes, right? Um, so you, <clears throat> as you said, you want to go on holiday in December, you have money right now. Put it in a money market fund. Uh, um, when, you, when December comes, you will get your money in two maximum uh, uh, three days, unlike a fixed deposit where you have to make, your timing has to be right. Uh, if you're going to Diani uh, on the 14th or 15th of December, you have to make sure that uh, your fixed deposits sort of aligns to, to that period. But an, a money market uh, fund, you know, you're saved those households of, you, you know, timing, just make sure you're going to hold it on the 14th, get in touch with us, uh, uh, ask for your money on the 10th, three days on the 13th, your money is in your account. The other investment asset class uh, is property. Uh, I mean, this is, um, you know, uh, land is the most famous and I think the default uh, investment asset for most Kenyans. Uh, I think I've, uh, on a personal poll, one in every, uh, uh, for every 10 friends that I have, I think more than five own a piece of land uh, 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 somewhere. So it's, 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 it has been the default investment asset for a very long time in Kenya. Uh, you know, and people who got in early have made money, uh, but in recent years, I think we've seen sort of like a stagnation of, uh, of prices. The other one is buildings. Uh, you, you know, uh, the good thing about buildings is that they generate an income, like land, which is non-income generating, and what your bet is on a capital gain uh, that uh, you know in a few months or years 
the value of that land uh, will, uh, will have gone up. So buildings uh, have an, you know, uh, a sense of uh, income generation. The next one is real estate investment trusts or REITs. Uh, now REITs, there are two types of REITs. There's an income REIT and a development REIT. So REITs uh, are a form of collective investment schemes, um, almost like what I was, the way I was describing a money market fund. So that's how a REIT operates. It pulls money from me, uh, Sam and Modoni, put it together and says, uh, let's identify a building that is already in existence. This is for the income REIT. Uh, you know, it's in a good location. It has a good tenant profile. Uh, it has full occupancy. So let us take this money, go buy that uh, building, and then we will use, so how we'll get our money back is through the rental income. So periodical rental income. So we say uh, we will get our rental uh, initial investment back in say five years, uh, just as a way of example. Then there's also the development treats where Modoni, Sam and I come together and say, hang on, uh, let's identify a piece of land somewhere and let's put up a structure. Uh, the market for three bedrooms is quite, you know, is quite uh, vibrant. Uh, that's the space we want to play in. Let's go identify a piece of land, put our money together, develop, uh, uh, develop that three bedroom, and sell it uh, to the market. So yeah, so those two income and and and, and development, and I hope I've made the difference uh, quite clear. The uh, the fifth asset class uh, is what we call alternatives. Now alternatives has a bag of so many uh, 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 so many options. Uh, in much in much more developed markets in the US and Europe and and, 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 and the likes, uh, there are you know various instruments outside traditional uh, equities and bonds, and uh, there are instruments that are written uh, uh, mostly by investment banks and and, and and fund management companies that people can invest in. The first one there is called an exchange an exchange traded fund. Uh, locally, we have uh, a, 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 a stock market, and what that means is that someone can, you know, uh, for example, Isla Micea can come up and say, we want to come up with an exchange traded fund. We want to take the benchmark of the Nairobi Securities Exchange and securitize it. So just mean we'll create a product of the Nairobi Securities uh, Exchange, and then that product will be sold and bought uh, in the market by our clients or the larger, uh, the larger public uh, population. Venture capital funds, uh, you know, I simply put their early stage investment uh, fund. If I could give a very practical example, I'd give a, a company we all know, Uber. Um, I think Uber a couple of years back was just an idea. Uh, so venture capitalists invest in ideas. Uh, they're forward looking, they're very future centric. Uh, so, I mean, Uber at some point was just an idea and the guy needed uh, some level of funding. So he approached venture capitalists, they believed in his idea and, 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 and they funded um, uh, what we modern day uh, Uber. Special purpose vehicles, um, you know, very somewhat uh, complicated and a bit complex, but it's basically just a company that, uh, again, using my two colleagues, um, Mudoni and Sam, uh, the three of us can come together and say, uh, we want to do a project, we want to start a company uh, that will be selling uh, whatever it will be selling flowers. So we come up with what we call a special purpose vehicle. It is a limited liability company in itself. It can acquire assets and it can have liabilities. So we become the shareholders of the special uh, purpose vehicle and we use that vehicle to make, uh, to make our investment. We can also uh, open it up to the public and tell the public, you know what, uh, we have this uh, SPV, uh, the acronym there is SPV, and I think we are onto something very great. You might want to 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 uh, to jump in. So, in a nutshell, really, that's what uh, an SPV is. The other uh, alternative is cryptocurrencies. I um, mean, a lot of buzz around cryptocurrency of late in the last two years. The two famous, the two most famous uh, cryptocurrencies are Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, but unfortunately, in this part of the world, the regulation. Uh, around cryptocurrencies is, is, is non-existent. Uh, and therefore, there are very few established fund managers or money managers that have any offerings around uh, cryptocurrencies. But in a nutshell, uh, cryptocurrencies is digital. It's a digital form of money. It, it, to me, it reminds me of it's M-Pesa on another level, on, an, on a more global, global level, because when you think about it, 
mobile money is digital cash. You don't at any one point touch physically touch the cash and, 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 and you're able to pay and buy. Uh, uh, so cryptocurrency is, uh, um, it, it uses a technology called blockchain technology, which is uh, the biggest idea around uh, blockchain is just decentralizing money and uh, making it, uh, you know, a store of value. Um, you know, there's a group of people who think that, um, you know, there's a community of people who think that the central life system as it is, the global financial system as it is favors, you know, a few or is imbalanced and therefore they want to create <clears throat> sort of like their own uh, form of money. Uh, when I look at Bitcoin and the price uh, trajectory, very, very, very volatile. People have made money, lots of money. People have lost a lot of money as well. Uh, if you look at Ethereum, Ethereum is more of a platform. It, it, it allows for the creation of all these other uh, uh, instruments, while Bitcoin is more of a, 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 a currency. But the gentleman or lady behind uh, cryptocurrency is uh, an anonymous, or rather pseudonymous, a person called Satoshi Nakamoto, who wrote uh, a, a white paper called Peer to Peer Review Cash, uh, Digital Cash System. Uh, the last one there I have is gold. Gold is the oldest known form of money. Uh, you know, thousands and thousands of years, gold has been existent and was used uh, as a form of money. Uh, as recently as 60, 70 years ago, the global monetary system was pegged of, uh, of gold, but, uh, you know, uh, that was taken off. So these are the various investment, um, you know, asset classes and, and investment securities uh, that you are likely to come across uh, locally and also at, uh, at global level. So what I've done here, uh, the two largest markets in, uh, in this part of the world are equities, that's a stock market and the bond market. So I've sampled uh, a few names here, uh, listed, uh, listed names. And what you try to do here is um, how have they performed? How has the price performed over the years. Uh, so please note, this is just price. Uh, quite a number of these companies also pay dividend, uh, which is because remember, when you're investing in stocks, you earn your return twofold. One price return and the other one uh, income, which is uh, uh, from dividend. So the first um, you know, highlighted box there is showing an average price return over those, over those 10 years. However, I feel it's very important that I, 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 I mentioned something, uh, that uh, investing in equities in terms of risk profile, it stacks up there. That uh, these are risky investments, uh, but hey, high risk, high return. So you will have good times and 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 simply put bad times. You know, uh, cycles. You know, markets go through cycles. So there's a time the economy is growing, companies are generating revenue, they're earning money, they're able to grow, and you see, and 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 investors tend to price that in through the stock market. But on the flip side, uh, if you look at last year, the second last column to your right, the year 2020, you know, once the pandemic hit, uh, you can see all counters across board, say for Safaricom, are uh, printed uh, negative, uh, 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 negative performance. Again, you will notice if I was to go column by column, the year 2010, uh, you know, quite good. Uh, at some point, people who, anyone who had invested in Cobank doubled his money. But then again, 2011 came, uh, markets didn't perform so well. You can see negative uh, across board. 2012 was better than 2011. 2013, even better than 2012. 2014, fairly flat. Then 2015 happened. You can see uh, negative performances across board. 2016 followed what 2015 had done. 2017, remember, was an election year. Very interesting. Uh, the markets sort of you know, brushed off political noise. Uh, I say this because I know we are going into an election year next year. Uh, it remains to be seen, you know, how markets will will perform, react, how investors will, you know, will price in uh, political risk, if any. Uh, um, yeah, 20, 2018, not a good year. 2019, mixed. Uh, uh, and this is now the benefit of either having a good uh, fund manager or doing your homework. Uh, you can see 2019 is a mixed bag. One count was down 40%, one was up 40%, one was 13, then one was up 40%. So this is where now I can say the rubber meets the road. Uh, have you done your homework? Have you known your why? Have you solved Modoni's puzzle, which is the why? Why are you investing? How much risk can you stomach? 
uh, you know, far, how, how far out are you willing to go? What is your time frame? Uh, so, you know, the last point here is that when you look at the average over that 10 year period, some counters have done fairly well, uh, some have not, some are fairly just, uh, uh, just flat. The next slide, uh, as I mentioned, the two, most, the two most vibrant markets are the equities market and the bond market. When I say vibrant, I mean liquid. It's easy to get a buyer and a seller of a bond or a stock uh, in a matter of hours or you know, a few days. Uh, you know, when you're investing, liquidity is very important. Um, unlike other hard assets, uh, the likes of land <clears throat> that you have to plan an exit and, and, you know, the, and, and the process can take three, four, five months. Equities, you buy Safari Com on Monday, you can sell it on Friday. When it comes to bonds, this is how I, 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 I picked two, two, two bonds, a five year and a 10 year, because again, <clears throat> remember uh, time horizon in investing is very important. Uh, so the average investor will say I have a five year, depending on what you're investing uh, for. Uh, Modoni said you can invest in to buy a house five years out. You can be investing for your retirement that is 10 years or 15 years out. So depending on why, again, very important, the why, uh, the where is determined by the why. So uh, this is how a five-year and 10-year bond have, uh, have performed. And remember, this is purely yield. So you make money off bonds in two ways. Number one, coupons. When you buy a five-year bond, say currently at 11, at a yield of 11%, every six months, you will be receiving 11% divided by two. So you'll be receiving a coupon every six months post investing in the bond. Now, if you're lucky enough and the interest rate environment favors you and there's a downward correction, you can earn a capital gain and, and make more than the 11%. You can add another five, six or 7%. Uh, However, the vice versa is also true. If, rates, if you buy at a time when rates are going up, that can negatively impact uh, your, overall, your overall return. So I hope that makes sense. The next one is how to invest. Um, there are two ways to invest really, uh, just simply put, right? Without the technical jargon, you can invest either directly or indirectly. So directly is you going directly to the stock exchange and saying, I want to buy shares of equity bank. And this is how much I have 5,000. Uh, uh, the minimum number of shares you can buy on the, on the Nairobi Securities Exchange is a hundred shares. So currently equity bank is around 50 shillings. So you need 5,000. To buy equity, to buy the you know the set uh, limit of 100 shares of uh, of equity bank. However, you can choose the easier route, which is just saying uh, ICA have ICA fund managers. They have been doing this for quite some time. They have a team of uh, you know talented and skilled portfolio managers. Why not just go through them? So I'll take you through both. So again, I'm focusing on the two big markets here uh, because uh, again, liquidity is key when you're investing. And, and like I said, and quite a number of people know the land buying and property process, uh, but very few I see um, you know, are well vast in the equities, uh, equity space. So the first step is you have to open a CDSE account. CDSE stands for the Central Depository and Settlement uh, Company. Uh, every market needs a settling house. Uh, so when you buy uh, a, a stock, it takes two or three days to settle. It is the CDSC that does the settling. And it is a CDSC account that, uh, that shows how much you bought and how much you own currently. So to, your, so to open one, you need a national ID, you need your KRA pin, and you need a photo size uh, photo. You, you can do that either directly to the CDSC or you can engage a stock broker. Uh, there are quite a number of stock brokers in the market. Uh, again, as I mentioned, you need a minimum of 100 shares, and of course, you need the money. I've, I've, I've come across people who, you know, you want to buy, but you, you think you have the money, but once the settling is happening, your account is overdrawn. You know, so you want to avoid, you want to avoid that. Uh, you, you want to make sure every time you're buying, your account uh, is funded because the CDSC links to a certain account, and therefore you need to be, or the broker rather, so you need to be to be funded. Investing in bonds. Um, this, you have to go directly to the Central Bank of Kenya. You have to open what they call a CDS uh, uh, account. Uh, remember, everything has gone digital. So unlike the early days where you'd have share certificates and all that, no, everything has been digitized. So, you, you know, you fill a form at the, at the, at the Central Bank. 
in that form, you know, you give your personal details. Again, you need a national ID, care pin, photos, and all that. Then again, most important, you need the money. You need money in your account. Again, I've seen people being blacklisted because you bid for a bond and your account didn't have money. And you know, when the settling comes, uh, you know, it's it's um it's a messy story. So after you've opened that, you have money in the account, you bid for a bond in the primary or secondary market. Remember, I said the central bank issues a bond once every month, and it is open to the public. It is open to every Kenyan foreigner. It is open to anyone who wishes uh, to invest. If you miss, if you either miss or did not know the primary, you can buy a bond in the secondary uh, in the in the secondary market. You just engage your broker. Uh, every so often, there's a list of bonds, and you choose the one depending on your. Do you want a five year? Do you want a ten year? Do you want a two year? Do you are you 25 years so you years of age? You will retire say 30 years out. There's a 25 year bond if you want. There's a 20 year bond. In fact, this year, this month, this month, the central bank has just issued an infrastructure bond, and I advise people to always look out for infrastructure bonds uh, uh, because you know they they have very good returns. Number one, uh, very liquid always easy to find a buyer and a seller and number three they have a tax uh, they have a tax uh, uh, advantage because of their nature as uh, as infrastructure infrastructure projects next uh, as i said there's an easier way of investing and that's why we are here as i see lion uh, we are here to make your investment journey easier uh, uh, more convenient so if you were to choose the left the first column on your left shows you the various asset classes Say you want to invest in a money market fund. Remember, we said a money market fund is about capital preservation. If you give me a million, the least I can do after a certain period is give you a million. But however, I will definitely give you slightly more than the one million that you gave me. And that's why the risk profile is classified as low risk. And at ICA, we have the ICA Lion uh, Money Market Fund, one of the top three largest, I think, funds in the, in the industry. We want to go to stocks. Stocks are about capital growth. You want you bought a stock at 10 shillings. If all goes well, it is at 15 or 20 shillings. That is capital growth, and that's why it's classified as high risk. I see a lion. We have the I see a lion uh, equity fund. There are people who want a mixed portfolio. You want to put one leg in bonds, another one in stocks. Uh, uh, so we have what we call a, a medium risk fund, which is the I see a lion uh, balanced uh, fund. Remember, all these funds are professionally managed. I happen to manage one or two of these, uh, of these funds. Mudoni also manages, uh, uh, manages one. The other one is fixed income assets. You want uh, bonds. You want exposure to bonds. You believe bonds are the way to go. Uh, and, and from a risk profiling, it's classified as medium. And it, it's sort of like an income uh, uh, generating. We have the ICA Lion fixed income fund. On the property side, yes, we are, we've not been left behind. Uh, property is about... Typically, capital growth. I think in Kenya, that's saying you know, broti maguta maguta. You know, high fast selling plots. Uh, typically, whose value tends to be you know, I don't know, one million, eight hundred, yeah, you know, three million. If you don't have such amounts, uh, we can give you exposure to the real estate sector through what we call the real uh, real estate investment trust. And we have, uh, we are the only company, uh, I think, with a listed IRIT. And uh, our REIT is called the Ilam Fahari uh, REIT. So really, ladies and gentlemen, that's a, that's a suit of offering at, at, at ICA. We've, we have a wide array. We've made sure we've, uh, from a risk perspective, if you're in your 50s or 60s, maybe you should be looking at the money market and then, and then the fixed income. If you're young in your 20s and 30s and 40s, I think you can go for, uh, you know, uh, for stocks, have a high, have a longer uh, time horizon. If you if you want exposure, if you you know you have an attachment to real estate, uh, the 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 IRIT is uh, is where you want to be. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, please remember to live happy and invest wisely. Sam, uh, back to you. Thank you all for your attention. All right. Thank you. Thank you, John. That was quite insightful. Uh, quite um, good information there. I promised you that things are going to get better. And indeed, we have seen things getting really, really good. Um, we are not at the tail end yet, but we are very close. Um, at this point in time, there's been quite a lot of questions that have been coming through. I 
I honestly can't even get through all of them. And a lot of questions have also been answered. But what I can assure you is that uh, none of these questions, we might not have all the time to answer all of them, but we will respond to each and every question that has been asked here. Uh, in every question that was asked in the first session, we are planning to put up a document where we will post all the questions and we will share with everybody. Something else that I noticed is that as I was going through the questions when John was um, doing the presentation on where, I think it triggered quite a lot of questions and uh, the questions were posted. But I also noticed that in uh, the second part for John's presentation, when he's talked about the how, um, I would say 90% of most of those questions that were being asked were also responded to, in addition to the other responses that have been coming up. But that notwithstanding, I will hope that um, Modoni, and um, I know John, you are presenting, perhaps you are not um, focusing on the questions as they're coming in. We perhaps can take one or two questions that uh, were not answered during the presentation. Um, and then we can answer them. I have given, uh, we have given you an opportunity to ask questions and indeed you have Mumecheza Kamanyini and you have asked the question, which is very good. Um, we will also have, and this is at the tail end, a surprise we had um, put in at the very end, we will have a chance to ask you the question. So I hope you have been paying attention. So, but before we ask the questions, um, we will go through, Modoni, I'll ask you to turn your mic on. And if you have spotted a question that um, is relevant to answer at this point in time, quite a lot of questions have come in relating to money market fund. I don't know whether the best thing is to just do a short summary about money market fund, and then um, it will answer quite a lot of questions that have come in. Another question which I would like John to prepare is questions relating to investing in the stock market um, and the comparison between fixed income markets and the money markets. So over to you, Modoni. Okay, thank you, Sam. So uh, we'll just highlight about how the money market fund works, though John has done um, a lot of that. Um, but the essence is investors come together, uh, pull their funds together or collect their funds together. And then these funds are invested by professional. Um, so this time it's ILAM. Um, invested by a professional in um, fixed income assets. So in, in, in assets such as fixed deposits, in bonds, um, in, in corporate bonds and, and, and treasury bills. So fixed income assets. So for the money market fund, it's for people who want capital preservation. So if you give us your 500 shillings, which is the minimum investment amount that is needed to invest in a money market fund, or even give us your 500 million, whichever amount you have, um, you the the worst you will get you or rather you will not lose the value of that 500,000 that you have um, it preserves the capital and it can also be used for income generation we do have clients who have put their money in a money market fund and and um, they use it to 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 fund their lifestyle you know you have accumulated your 50 million of, after working for years they invest it in the money market fund and every month they get an income so that it can be used for income generation as well um, so the money market fund earns a daily rate, but it is um, paid out or distributed on a monthly basis. So whatever amount of money you have, like we said, the minimum for our money market fund is 500 shillings and it's digital. Um, you don't even need, to, uh, you can invest via M-Pesa. You put in your 500,000, every day it earns something. And then at the end of the month, it is distributed into your account and you can um, withdraw the interest and leave the capital. You can withdraw the capital as well if you need it for another project. Um, but it is it is one of the most flexible and one of the best investment avenues for people to to invest in. I know I saw one of the questions there. Um, I have five hundred thousand. Which investment um, opportunity do I have? I think the money market fund uh, works well for you, and especially if you're low risk. Um, yeah, so that, that gives you the basics of the money market fund. So it is for capital preservation and income generation. It's very flexible. You can withdraw if you have an emergency. You can top up at any time. Um, and uh, top up meanings you can add more money into your money market fund at any point in time. And you can also withdraw at any point in time to meet your needs. So I hope that um, has answered. I think also Catherine gave an indication of the rate there on, on the chat. But for those who maybe have not read the chart, the, the average return 
is about 8.02%. Um, so it, it has gone up and it has also been um, down, but the average is about 8%. So let's say average is 8% for our money market fund, and it's 8% per annum. I saw an interesting question, maybe I can, before I go to, before John can answer his, someone asks, which is better, building a house to stop paying rent or paying rent and using the money to invest somewhere? So it, de uh, it depends also on your position. I see uh, Elizabeth is, is answering the question. She'll, she'll type it out for you. But it depends. I mean, if, if you already have the, the land and it's at a convenient place for where you work um, and you have accumulated the funds, go ahead and build the house because the house is an asset as well. But if you do not have the, the capital that we needed to build the house at this point in time, it makes sense to in a house where you can afford the rent, where the rent is not taking up too much of your money. So uh, pay the rent in a reasonable place um, and then accumulate your funds towards um, building the house um, at a later time. Because you can invest in equities. Yes, the high, risk, high return, but maybe you've given yourself 10 years to build the house. So you can invest in equities and grow your capital much faster. And hopefully within those 10 years, you'll have accumulated the funds to build um, the house. So I hope that answers or gives you perspective. So like when I said it depends, every, every person's situation is different. Um, so again, uh, I hope that that helps give you perspective on whether to build now. If you have the capital, go ahead and build. Um, because you're building, I'm assuming you're building it for yourself and not for rent. Go ahead and build. It is, it is an investment um, for you. Um, if you don't have the capital, you can put the money aside, um, investing it so that you can raise the capital to build the house. Over to you, John. Thank you, Muzoni. Uh, wow, I have so many questions <laughs> to answer, but uh, you know, uh, I'm impressed by um, I can sense <clears throat> a natural feeling to a natural desire, you know, there's a desire to invest in capital markets. And uh, you know, quite a bit of uh, questions. I'll try. I've been uh, noting them down. I'll just try and go through uh, five or six, because some are also. It's one question uh, that is very similar to another, only being asked in a different uh, in a different way or using different words. So, difference between stock market and uh, the fixed income market very simple. It's about risk uh, and return. One gives you sort of like a stable, the fixed income gives you a stable upward sloping trajectory uh, on a best case basis. And another one gives you is if you if you plotted a graph of stock market performance, uh, it bounces, you have peaks and troughs. It's up and down, up and down. As I showed you, you know, there are certain years that uh, equities did well, another year equities did not do uh, so well. So one is more of a stable, lower growth, uh, but you know, upward sloping. And the theory behind it is really is the power of compounding. It's called. It's said to be the eighth wonder of the world. Uh, that if you had put a million in the year 2000 into a money market fund, you did not add any uh, in the last 20 years. I, I think you. I don't know. I, this example has just come to my mind, but I think you would be having around 2.5 million uh, by now. Because if you earn ten percent uh, after year one, you are now one point one million. Then you add a, you add another ten percent on the one point one. So now you had one point two million. Then you add another ten percent off. So the power of compounding really is 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 um, is a great tool that I advise. I really advise people to take advantage of. You know they say in this world that you have only two things: you have time and freedom. So the best way to utilize your time. You know, be patient. Uh, uh, a steady, uh, sort of like gradual uh, uh, investment uh, uh, horizon. Bonds return. Someone has noted that uh, in my in my, on my slides where I was showing the bond returns. Yes. Um, remember again, our markets are very tied to what's happening to the economy, what's happening at global level. Because remember, I mean, developed markets. We have become such a globalized community that sometimes what's happening in the US tends to affect our market. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, policymakers in the US uh, will, you know, say something and it has a negative impact on the on the economy. Uh, please allow me to use the advantage of the, uh, of the former US president, uh, Donald Trump. Sometimes he would tweet 
you know, whatever he was tweeting. And the next day, you know, markets, uh, markets would react and it, and it would sieve to almost uh, um, uh, a local. So very globalized. We have factors that affect markets, uh, you know, globally and also and also uh, domestically. So yes, bonds uh, yield on bonds can uh, um, you know can uh, can be lower. Uh, when that is happening, again, it's a good thing if you're an existing bond holder because it means you're gaining your capital value is is growing. But as a new investor, assuming you already have you know you're investing at a much at a, at a much lower yield. Um, in terms of what to look at, someone uh, asked, you know, how do I know which fund, which, how to invest? And off the top of my head, and, and I'm shooting from the hip here, uh, really, um, I always advise people to look at your yield. What is your return? Um, someone is asking whether to buy or, or buy, build your home or buy or build rental. Always look at your yield. You look at the cash flow. Look at the return you're likely uh, uh, likely to have. So always focus on yield. And yield, in terms of calculation, can be very simple. Just do what is the cash flow every month times twelve. So my annual cash flow is say whatever number. So for example, if you've built um, a three bedroom, going back to my example, you're earning say forty k every month. You say forty k plus uh, plus twelve. That's three hundred and something. How much did it cost me to build the house? It cost you four million. So we, it costs you four million. So the yield there is around, uh, I think that's a seven, eight percent uh, yield. So always uh, focus on yield, and then you know try to compare it with what does ICA have to offer. Uh, if is it lower, for example, if you use the money market fund, is it lower or higher than the money market fund? Then you know you're better off just being in in the in the money market fund. Uh, so someone asked whether the, the rates are net of tax, uh, specifically for the money market. Yes, uh, 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 you know there are gross of fees uh, uh, and, and and I think net of taxes. The difference between money market and growth fund, uh, one is more of a capital preservation avenue. The other one is more of a growth. You want your money to you want your money to grow at a faster rate, and therefore by extension, you are assuming uh, more risk. So it's about risk profile. The other question, treasury bills, do you need a yes, you need a CDS account. Uh, you still have to apply. If you're going directly, you still have to apply through the central bank. But as I said, we are here for you. We are, you know, we are the, uh, you know, we, are, um, we are fund manager. We can do this on your behalf. Uh, if you invest in a fixed income fund or a money market fund, you get exposure to, 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 to treasury bills. Uh, and, and, and maybe what we're offering here is convenience. Um, there was a question on indirect. Does indirect cost uh, investing have a cost? Yes, yeah, yes, it does. Uh, remember, you have to go through a broker. So, to some extent, uh, yeah, there are obviously fees uh, both at broker level and also there are certain regulatory fees uh, that you need to pay. But more often than not, they tend to be uh, anywhere between, just to be on the safe side for myself, 2% and below uh, of whatever you're investing if you go directly. Uh, will be, you know, will be, uh, will be investing, investing costs. So some have uh, the ones have the ones are jotted down. I've tried to quickly just uh, go through them. So back to you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, for that, thank you, Modoni. Um, I am looking at the chat platform. I'm also looking at the Q and A platform and um, or the Q and A tab. And I can see quite a lot of questions have been asked and they have been answered. I am also trying to look through to see if there's one or two unique, very unique questions that are not revolving around the investment options and uh, not um, about money market or the unit trust funds. Seen quite a lot of questions relating to taxes and fees, um, which are being answered as we carry on. Um, and like I promised that we will collate all these questions um, and we will uh, share um, a document that will have all the answers. I know you perhaps may have uh, posted a question, but because of how they are, um, you know, you'd really need to scroll up and down to finally get to see whether the, an the answer has been posted. Um, at least this will also give you an opportunity when you receive the document to get to see the answer and also for everybody else i mean you may not have asked that question but 
uh, it's a question that is important to you and the answer will be there. Um, that said, I will ask Modoni um, if you have, you want to make a comment on the poll. Yes, thank you, Sam. Um, so I'll just highlight what we have seen so far. Um, so we asked um, how many people um, invest and we got 94% said have invested and only 6% have not. Then what does investment mean to you? Majority, that's 86% actually said investments means putting money in assets that can generate an income. And I, it actually reflects what I had said earlier that for most people, the reason why they invest is to generate or to earn an income. Um, but we did have 7% saying putting money away for any day, that's what investment means to them. Others investments means starting a business, which is quite great. And for others, it means contributing to a chama or table banking. Or being, or, and for 3%, it was buying anything of value, an interesting definition to investments. So um, we, the third question we asked was, why do you invest? And 82% of you said to grow my money. So some to become rich, others for emergency. Um, thankfully, or at least we've seen 0%, none of you invest because they're friends or their family or others do it, which is good. So it means you all have a mind of your own, which is great. Um, six is to leave an inheritance for my a loved one, that's 6% and 4% to maintain my lifestyle. And the fourth question we asked was, when do you think is the right time to invest? Um, we had when my responsibilities have reduced 40%. So this is split, 40% said when the, when the res responsibilities have reduced and another 43% said when the re responsibilities have increased, which is quite interesting. 14% um, said when I when I get a better job, um, then they think it's time to invest. Um, and 2% on when I get a bit older. And our last question was, what portion of your income do you invest? So we had zero to 10%, which is 45% of the audience, um, or those who took the poll invest between zero to 10%. We do have a healthy amount that 6% invest between 11 and 25%. We have 15% invest between 26 and 50%, and we have 3% to invest above 50%, which is quite great. Um, you know, looking forward to get into that position where I can invest more than 50% of my income. Um, so thank you for participating in the in the poll. Um, there's someone who in the poll who said that the reason why they invest is to, to um, for financial freedom, which I think is good, and it was also the key of our first um, webinar. So keep on um, coming in and listening to our webinars. We hope it's been useful. Give us your feedback. Um, we are looking forward, I know as you are, for the document which will, which will be answering all the questions that you have asked in this platform. So Sam, over back to you. I have gone through the poll. All right, thank you. Thank you, Modoni. Um, I promised that we have another one last session where we will be getting to also ask you questions. And at this point in time, I want you to do this because I'll need you to type very fast because you will be typing your answers uh, on the chat. And the first person to answer the question correctly will get a gift. I will talk about what gift it is at the very tail end of this particular exercise. So if you've been paying attention, get your fingers ready we will be answering questions. Are we ready for the first question? And the first question goes, what is the name of the ICA Lion Money Market Fund platform? Wow, I already have a hundred answers. Um, my IBC, please give me, please take note of the first person to answer the correct answer. I have seen quite a lot of correct answers. We are now over a hundred answers. I will say we can stop there um, for that particular question. IBC, please get ready with the first person with the correct answer. I will be announcing the winners uh, shortly. 
Now for those who want to give it another shot, we will, I will ask you the second question. And here goes the second question. What is the minimum amount to open a money market fund with ICA Lion? Answers are coming through. Thank you very much. Uh, this is good. Over two, uh, almost 200 answers. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. That one was quite easy. Um, IBC again. Uh, let us have the first person with the correct answer. And I have a third question. What is the topic of our first webinar masterclass? Now, this is for the very first ones who can type. The first topic of our first webinar masterclass. Great. I think um, we can end those answers right there. And um, my IBC is ready. Winner, can I get the winner for the first question? Stacy Maritim. Stacy Maritim. Stacy Maritim, you have. Uh, you were the fastest for the first question. The second question. Francis Mburu. Francis Mburu, thank you. Francis Mburu, you got uh, the second question right. And now the third question, which was a little long. The first person with the correct answer. We are still checking. This one had quite interesting answers. The answers are still coming through. Whitney, let me have the winner for this. Patience Mbogwa. Patience Mbogwa is the winner for the third question. All right, now to the prize. All the winners, we will give you, or we will post a thousand shillings into your investment account. If you already have one, we will be sending you that amount of money into your investment account. It is all yours as we carry on on this journey for investments. For that person who will be joining us, I mean, who has won and you do not have an account yet, we will guide you on how to set up the account. And once the account has been set up and active, we will post that same amount um, to your investment account. So as we carry on, um, for the others, it's not all lost for those who also answered correctly, even for those who answered incorrectly, but for all of us, all of us who have joined, we still have something else we will be sending it uh, over to you on email. And um, at this point in time, I will request that a link is posted and that link is posted on the chat. Please let us all check the chat. Um, is the link ready? Yes, the link is ready. Please click on that link before it disappears when we end this session so that we can have an opportunity to engage closely. And in that particular session or that from, from that particular link, we will be able to gather more information, we will be able to interact, and we will make these sessions um, quite um, uh, beneficial to all of us. So click on that link, at least uh, make sure that you have saved it, and then we will carry on uh, moving forward. At this point in time, we are doing very well on time. Um, 
I have seen some comments. The link requires permission or filing as unavailable. Um, let me see. Uh, Whitney, check on that link again as we, just to be sure before we end Apologies, this session. That's been rectified. It has been rectified, thank you. Uh, click on it if it is opening, that would be good. I still see needs permission. Can somebody post and say that it is now good? I can see, okay, now it's working now. Thank you, manage, resend the link. Let us resend the link because the comments have already gone. Good to go. It's working. Thank you. The link has been uh, reposted. Click on the link. Let me hear the last one. It is okay. Thank you. Great. Now we have come to the tail end of our session today. We would like to invite you for the next session. Please look out uh, for the invite. I want to believe the next one will even be more interesting, more informative. We still have two more sessions to go. We could leave and go to a fifth session, but let us keep on educate, getting this uh, information. Information is powerful and I am sure we will all benefit from these sessions. That said, unless there's anyone who wants um, to add something, but from my end, it is bye-bye. Have a good day. Our weekend is not so far. Enjoy the rest of the week and the weekend ahead. Thank you.